Hello, in this video I'll show you how quickly you can damage your objects using Vertex Paint. So I'll just start with a box here. That's a basic demonstration. Let's say this is a building or part of a building or just some sort of pillar here. Alright. And I'll just insert some loops here. And now I can also use Tessellate to insert more edges through here. I can also select all the vertices here and use Tessellate right here. All right. And now I can also model in some basic damage by using, for example, the cut tool here. And now I can simply cap this hole and just connect these vertices here. And now I'll apply crease set. Select all the edges here. I can increase this value here. So you can select these edges as well. All right, create set, say 0.25 and open subdiv, turn off Iceland display to give ourselves more vertices here to work with. All right, and now I can apply the vertex paint modifier and I can use either the shaded view or the unshaded view to the color of the vertices. And with this color here being black, I'll use the paint all tool right here. And now I'll switch this to white. And now I can activate the paint tool here, perhaps decrease the size and paint white right here. Everywhere that I want there to be damage here. All right, there we go. Now we can just turn off paint, switch this back to disable vertex color display. I can just apply the poly on top. And now I can apply a viewer display mod since I'm using V-Ray here. And for text map, we'll click here. And I will use composite. And now I'll press M to open up the material editor. And I can just drag this into here as an instance. So for the mask, I'll be using vertex color the mask right here, layer one mask. And for the layer one actual texture, I will use a procedural map, cellular. I'll switch this to chips, activate fractal, perhaps decrease the size here, and this will be layer one. So right now, this map right here will only apply in the white vertices here. The wider the vertex, the more of this map will appear here. And this is what's going to affect the displacement. If you don't have V-Ray, you can just plug this into the displacement slot right here. And here is the render. And now we have this damage effect right here. Going from smooth to destroyed here. If you don't want there to be such a sudden transition, what you can do is go back to Vertex Paint and use Blur All right here. We can simply use the blur brush and blur it individually in various areas here. And now you get a much softer transition. I can also continue with this by using the paintbrush and perhaps painting some cracks here. And once again, if you have more vertices here, you can paint finer detail here. And now I'll just apply Edit Poly and reapply your displacement. I can simply drag this composite map by using this circle right here and drag this back into text map. I also want to make sure that 
keep continuity is on here and I can change the amount as well and now I will re-render here and now we've got this result right here kind of cracks forming here we can also use this in creating material as well so many times we have a different color on the inside in a damage area than the outside so in order to do that I'll just use a VR material All right, and I can actually create a new composite map here. I'll plug this into the fuse. And I'll just use V-Ray color here. This will be layer one. We can make this a lighter material or darker. Make a new layer here. Hold shift and duplicate this and this will be a lighter color. And for the layer 2 mask, I'll use the same vertex color map right here. And now I will apply this material here. Perhaps I can decrease the glossiness here, increase the reflection, and re-render. So here's the result. But one thing we need to change is we actually want the damage to go inside and not outside. So what I'll do is go back into the material editor. And what I will do is actually create a color correction map right here. And I'll plug cellular into color correction. I will invert it. And I'll plug this into layer 1 right here. And now I'll go into the viewer displacement settings right here. And I'll have this go instead of one, negative one. And what I can also do is replace these viewer colors with more detailed texture maps. So we can get more of this result right here. So you can use either procedural textures in 2ds Max or textures that you made using a program like Substance Designer or perhaps even displays the maps that you've made in a program like ZBrush by scoping it yourself here. So you can create your own custom detail here. And here's a new render. I can see I've made the texture more complex here. I've made the damaged parts darker here. And I've also added a bitmap texture for the concrete. And I'll show you what the material setup for this is like. So basically here I can actually simplify this even more by just using this one map right here. So basically what's happening here is that I've got a composite map and I've got three layers. So I've got a bitmap right here plugged into V-Ray Trapler and Texture. I've got the blend set to one. And what this will do is it will apply, project the texture map onto each axis, both the front of the axis and the back of the axis. So on the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis, projecting a texture on there. So this pretty much saves you time without having to unwrap anything. And so we're applying this VR check parent texture to layer one. And now I'm taking this bitmap, color correction, and I'm just kind of desaturating it and make it a little bit darker, decrease the brightness. And this will be layer 2, and the layer 2 mask will be the vertex color here. I'm also plugging this texture into another color correction map, and this time making a little bit blue here, a little bit darker. This is negative 26, this is negative 31, and this is being plugged into another VR chopper and texture and into layer 3. Now for the layer 3 mask, I want it to be both the vertex color as well as the cellar map right here because the cellar map gives us a mask for the actual rocks. So what I've done is created another composite map and for layer 1 is cellular and for layer 1 mask is the vertex color. And I plug this into layer 3 mask. And this gives us this effect right here which once again we can make more complex by increasing the vertices we can paint more detailed textures here, more detailed cracks with less blurriness here. And so what's great about this setup is that once you've got your material here, you can quickly apply vertex colors to any object and get the same effect here. So I will just hide this and I'll just create the same effect using a sphere. And let's say I've got some swords stabbed into the sphere. So I'll just quickly create a basic 
sword object here. All right. And now I'll just stab it into the sphere in multiple areas here. I'll use local for the rotation. All right, and now I'll just subdivide this. Right away, I'll apply Vertex Paint. Fill this with black here. And then switch the color to white here. And paint some white here. In fact, let's actually make this even more complex. Let's increase Turbo Smooth to 2, so we have even more vertices to work with here. So we're going to paint more detailed vertex paint because vertex paint depends on the vertices. And if you have more vertices, you'll be able to get sharper results here. All right, and once again, I'll just apply for displacement, and I can pop this same composite map into the text map slot right here. Once again, use negative value. Let's try negative 2.5, and give this the same material right here. And now I'll do another quick render here. And here's the render we get this cracked effect right here. Thank you for watching and take care.